Hello everyone, happy Monday. It is Coach Tammy here and uh, I was playing with some color earlier as I'm working on some paintings for our Artsy Association and I thought, you know what, let's visit the color wheel again because um, I always assume that people know how to do color and yet it's always a great refresher A for myself as I work on new compositions and painting colors as well as sharing it with you. So hopefully you learned something, but um, it's gonna be pretty basic. Color Theory 101. All right. So basically color is one of the elements of art. And the elements of art, when I used to teach in a classroom, I always used to say, um, a construction worker may come to build your house and what are the items that they're gonna have? Well, the construction builder is going to have a toolkit full of hammers and screws and nails and measuring tape and hammers and screwdrivers and all of those kinds of things. So when we talk about the elements of art, um, color is one of the elements. Another one is texture, how you paint or capture on a photograph, how the way something looks or looks like it would feel. Um, value, we're gonna talk about value um, as well as many others, but today we're just gonna concentrate on color. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn down my camera here. And I have my poster that I had in the classroom way back when that I want to share with you. So basically color is one of the elements and when it is pure, it's seen mm. under white light. So if you have shaded areas or dark areas or whatnot, color can be skewed. And sometimes you hear the word hue, and hue is basically just another name for color. Um, there are hues, there are values, which I touched on a minute ago. There is intensity of color and so on and so forth. So this is pretty basic. Every kid from kindergarten on can basically tell you what the primary colors of the color wheel are, right? And so what I'm gonna do for you today is I am going to, I took a canvas and I um, took a paper plate. If I can get my stand to work, here I am outside. So you're seeing little seedlings falling into this. So much for summer. And what I did is I took the basic colors as well as black and white. And then I took a green and I'll come to that in a little bit. But the primary colors, as you well know, are red, yellow, and blue. And these colors are pure colors. They're colors that can be mixed together to make many other colors. And so what I'm gonna do is in this circly space here, I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just using a round. And I always like to put red at the top. And so I'm gonna come in here with the red and I'm just gonna make a section of red and I'm gonna paint that in. Now keep in mind that this is um, student grade paint. And so there are many, many, many different brands of paint out there. And if you were using a different brand, it might be called something like a magenta red or whatever, which is also going to change the color. You could sit for hours and hours and hours and do color theory and make notes and come up with really cool colors that you may want to use in paintings. And that's one of the things that I encourage you to do. So I always do a color wheel with red on the top. And you can see that the quality of this video isn't necessarily great. It's not the closest, but at the end I can show you. I always put red at the top, and then I always put yellow down here at the left. So let me wash my brush out. Get all that color out of there. And I'm just using a paper towel to pat out the color. And then I'm gonna go back into my yellow. I'm gonna put my yellow down here. And a color wheel is generally done in a triangle pattern. And so I'm putting the yellow down on the left-hand side. And yellow is very transparent, as you can see. You can see the pencil is still coming through. You can see the white of the canvas. So this might take a couple of coats as well. But I put the first coat down. I'm probably not gonna go into second and third coats just for this purpose. I'm gonna wash my brush out again. Dry it off. And I'm gonna go into my third color, which is blue. So I'm gonna move over my camera, grab some blue, and I'm gonna put my third of the three primary colors over here called blue. And I'm not worried about staying in the lines or anything because I'm just experimenting on a canvas. In fact, this is a canvas that had a hole in it. And here's a fun fact, if you go into Michael's and you go back to the canvases and they have a bundle, 
and somebody has punctured one of the canvases, they'll discount it. So I think I got seven canvases for like three bucks. So that was pretty awesome. So I just put a piece of tape on the back and I'm just playing with it. You can kind of see it up here. There's a little hole in there, but there's a piece of tape beyond it. So those are the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And when we take these colors and we mix them together, so if I take yellow and mix it with blue, we come up with our secondary color, green. If I take blue, mix it with red, I come up with a secondary color called purple or violet. If I take red and yellow, I come up with a color called orange. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take one scoop of red and one scoop of blue, and I'm gonna come up with the purest that I can come up with. So I'm just gonna take one scoop and put it in the center, one scoop of my blue, put it in the center, and mix it up. Now I can already tell that this one has a little bit more blue in it, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more red. The darker colors are a little bit more intense, so you get to play with that a little bit as well. So this is that violet color. So if I mix these two colors together, now this is gonna be the first of my three secondary colors. And I have a violet color. Wash out my brush, and we're gonna do the green and the yellow next. Excuse me, not the green and the yellow, the blue and the yellow. Blue and the yellow make green. So I'm gonna take one scoop of blue, one scoop of yellow, mix the two of these together and kids love this right when you teach this and adults need to be reminded when you're teaching them in classes to do these things because it's been a while for some of them and they don't necessarily remember the color theory and so it's just teaching them how to go back in and say okay remember now blue and yellow make green therefore is it a teal you're looking for how can we make the color that you're wanting as you're teaching your classes I'm gonna wash up my brush. We're gonna go back in and make the last color, which is gonna be yellow and orange. Not yellow and orange, red and yellow. Make orange. You can tell that it is a Monday, at least in my world. All right. I uh, did create some paintings for all of you that you'll be seeing in the near future over the weekend, so that's exciting. I'm gonna take the color red. Took a color red, put it here. I'm gonna scoop up the same amount of yellow and put it here and start mixing red and yellow make an orange and that's a pretty successful orange mix it up real well you can kind of see the palette underneath and then I'm going to put that secondary color together so the only way you can get these secondary colors is if you mix two primary colors together so now just out of three colors on the color wheel we now have six we have the primary colors red, yellow, and blue, and we have the secondary colors, purple, green, and orange. And this is basic color 101, guys. Again, you could go on and you could um, go onto Pinterest or Google or whatever, and you could watch many, many, many videos on color theory, but I just thought I'd jump on here and do it for you today. Then we have another set of colors. We're gonna make six more colors, and those are called tertiary colors. And they are, again, the neighboring colors. So if I add orange to red, I'm gonna get a red orange color. If I uh, mix red and violet, I'm going to get a red violet. Notice I said red orange, that's the name of the color, red violet, because I'm using the primary color name first. So red violet, red violet, red orange. I'm going to have yellow orange, yellow green. I'm going to have blue violet and blue green. So the basic uh, thing for this is to just go back in. And because I already have my green, I'll start there. So I have my green and yellow together. I'm gonna add more of the primary color into this. So I'm gonna take another scoop of yellow and add some yellow into that green that I made before. And this is totally up to you how far you wanna go with this. I think I'm gonna have a little bit more because I really want you to see the difference. So there's that yellow green. And if I put this color in between those two, this is basically going to be in a painting kind of a lime green. If you were doing a pure lime green, you might dip a little bit of white into it and adding a little bit of white into it changes it even more. That's how I like to teach my classes um, how to make the lime green is by adding some white into it. All right, I'm gonna uh, wash out my brush and I'm gonna go back into the yellow-orange next. I'm gonna add more yellow to the orange. 
So I already have my orange color here. I'm gonna take more yellow and add it in. And again, you get to decide how much you wanna make. If you did this 10 times in a row, I guarantee you would not make the same color because they change per droplet of paint as to how that color is gonna turn out. But you can see this one has more of a yellow base. Okay. I'm gonna go back into that red and orange and I'm gonna add more red into the orange. Now, because I've already kind of polluted this one with yellow, I might have to mix up another one, so that's what I'll do. I'm gonna take yellow, red, and have more red than yellow. And now I have a yellow, or excuse me, a red orange. Talk about confusing, huh? All these names. So I'm putting more red into that orange tone. And you can see the colors are changing already. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my canvas so we can go ahead and continue with the red violets. That'll be our next color. So we already have our violet. And to help save steps today, I'm gonna take red and add it into half of this violet and make my red violet so I don't have to mix up another. So I'm adding more red into the existing violet and I'm gonna put that color down. This is a really fun color to use, the red violet painting some flowers or something. And then I'm gonna take my brush and wash it out again. I wanna get all that red out of there and I'm gonna add more blue into the violet this time. I'm gonna turn my canvas a little bit further and I'm gonna take more blue and add it to the violet. Also another fun color. It's kind of like a blueberry color. And there is that color. And again, not super, super great lighting out here. It's a cloudy day today, but this is the best lighting that I have. Uh, so I decided to come outside. And then the last color is I'm gonna add more blue to my green and I'm gonna get a blue green. Remember, we always use that primary name first. So here's my green. I'm gonna add blue to it and I'm gonna have more of a blue green. So there's my blue green color. All right, so I started with my primary colors just as a review. I'm gonna try and lift up my camera here for a second. So I've got my red, yellow, and blue, and you place them in a triangle and then mix those two colors and place them off to the left or off to the right or whatever, and you just keep mixing more of the primary color into it to get those colors. Another thing that we want to talk about is something called value. And value comes when you take and add either the color black or white to a color. And I'll keep it really simple. There are many, many different versions. So let's say I'm going to take this color red and I want to make a lighter value. I'm going to take the color red and white together and mix them. And red and white, depending on how much of what color you put in there, more white will make a baby pink and more red will make a hot pink. So here is a value of red. If I put more red in there, brighten it up a little bit, it still has that white tone because I used the same puddle as I was mixing, and put that down, you can see that's more of a hot pink color. If I take that color and I add a tiny, like a teeny little bit of black to it, if I take black and add it to the color red, it's gonna come up with kind of a burgundy tone and I put way too much black in there, so I'm gonna mix it up a little bit further, but you can see that that is another value. It still has some red in it. If I keep mixing some red over the top, it becomes like a burgundy. So we have primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors, values is adding whites and blacks into the color. And then we have something called complementary colors. So if you are living across the street from somebody that you really enjoy, you uh, complement their lawn, that's the person across the street. If we take these colors called the complementary colors, and those are the ones that are red and green. So I always say Christmas colors, blue and orange. Blue and orange are like the Broncos, right? The Denver Broncos. And then yellow and purple are like the Vikings. Would have been good if they were all football teams, but they're not. 
But I'm gonna take the color orange and blue and mix those together. And I'm gonna show you that if you take complementary colors, orange and blue, I'll take a little bit of blue and add it into my orange here. It becomes a brown tone. This one's really kind of a yellowy brown tone. So the two of these make brown tones. If I mix the red and the green, it's gonna become a different color brown and etc. So now we have those colors. So if you forget your brown paint at home at an event, then you can go back in and take those complementary colors if you remember it and come up with some type of a brown. If you don't like the brown that you mixed, add a little dot of black into it and it becomes more of like a Hershey brown color. So I wanna show you this chart here and I just got paint all over my hand, so one moment. And we talked about value, but we haven't talked about intensity yet. So intensity, when we just talked about those complementary colors being opposites on the wheel, if we take the color orange and blue, which we just did, and it depends on how much you add into it, you can get different intensity in your colors. So the brightness of the color, if you want it more dull, add the complementary color in it. If we add a little blue to the orange, the orange becomes less intense. And when you have paintings like that, and I'm gonna see if I can bring this up a little closer. There are no intense colors in this painting. So it's very, very muted, which means they took the complementary colors and worked from that palette. And when you think of the color wheel, if you think of the color wheel that was used with the primary colors, this one obviously has less intensity. It's more neutralized, right? Because we added different colors together. Now this next one right here is actually the same flower. They're all the same flower. But because the light of the sun and the darkness of the shadows makes it look like we painted it a monochromatic. It makes it look like we took the color pink and we added some black to the pink and we added some white to the pink, but it's really just the light that's shining on these images. So there you go. Turn this around. Hopefully you learned something from that. Um, the moral of the story is really just going back in and taking, if you have time, right, and you're working with some paints, and taking notes. Take out that journal book and start uh, with the primary colors and the secondary colors and then add a dot and then write. I added a dot of white and then mix up that color and then you're gonna have that palette. I know Maria has talked about this in past um, videos as well. Um, there's a washi tape one, so she loves washi tape and she has buckets and buckets and she takes these pieces of tape and she puts them down and she tries to match the colors in there and that's how she gets some inspiration for the colors that she uses in some of her projects as well. So have a great rest of your Monday. I need to get back to some more paintings so we have some uh, awesome Halloween festival type paintings as well as fall in our gallery for you and you know right before you know it it's June but it'll be August and you'll be wanting to have those ready and painted and and uh, booking those parties for fall. So have a great rest of your day. Hope you learned something.